would say that it's it's very sleepy. It's very beautiful. It's very rugged. Um, it's the sort of place that maybe when you get a little bit older you start to appreciate it more. But maybe when you know you're growing up, um, you kind of just get itchy feet and um, you kind of want to want to escape it. I mean, I, I grew up, I was, you know, in an area that's quite rural and I was an only child and a lot of my escape, if you like, was, um, I was a little bit of a, a child of nature, so lots of just running wild in the hills and my parents were both hippies and just let me do whatever I liked. And the other, the other side of that was uh, just immersing myself in listening to their record collection. So, yeah, quite a secluded childhood and, and background but a great place to you know immerse yourself in writing and uh, and uh, and from where we're from myself and Ridgeon we're from um, North Wales and it hasn't got a huge musical legacy you know I think the the last big band to kind of come out of our area of North Wales was the alarm in the 70s so not a lot of references not a lot of gigs going on I think you know we were really hungry for live music when it came through there was like one club in like a 20 mile radius and like if a band came through there it didn't matter what the fuck it was if it was a tribute band it was just like <laughs> oh, a night out you know yeah. something to go to so and I think that you know you're not spoiled and I think it it, it does it, it ups the, the ante it ups the passion you know and the passion for maybe you know going and, 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 and seeing some more of the world as well so. so I mean what did music represent to you then growing up in a rural place like that you, obviously you've made reference to it there but just like that, do you think you had more of a passion or you identified with it more because of coming from an isolated place? Yeah, it was. It just was, you know, an, a way of, of passing the time and, and fulfilling the imagination. It was, you know, I was very fortunate in that sense that my parents were big, big record collectors and they were big bootleggers and we had, you know, a library almost to choose from. There was, you know... You know, there was no, it was, wasn't genre specific, you know, I think it was just good music of all different. So, you know, you, you might have heard of somebody on the radio or seen something on the TV and they'd have the back catalogue. So, you know, I was, I think I was a little bit of an anal child because I used to go through it all alphabetically. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, it was, no, it was great. It was a, a lot of hours, a lot of hours spent just listening and I suppose, you know, that just seeps into... You know, the, you know, yourself as a, a writer down, down the line, you know. What about yourself, Matt? What was your childhood experience of music like? Uh, very strange, I think, yeah. I just, my dad was like a guitarist, well, still is, and uh, liked his jazz funk. So I, I listened to a lot of jazz funk as a kid, uh, a lot of Spira Gyra, and uh, <laughs> was addicted to Jamiroquai for some reason. And, uh, yeah luckily progressed from there so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so that was that really yeah I think my dad um, definitely encouraged me drumming wise uh, just got me to play in bands that he was in and we'd go and play pubs occasionally and uh, try and get free beer never worked but oh, so. yeah, you were only 11. <laughs> well yeah that's true but yeah <laughs> Well, I mean, at school, were you like the only drummer? You know, every drummer is in about six bands when they're a kid. You know, I d it was it was a bit like that. Yeah, it wasn't. Um, there weren't that many drummers. Yeah. So you were a drumming co. Yeah, I was. I was. I was <laughs> the drummer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you know, some people have said that North Wales are being growing up in a rural place. Not to dwell on it, but it's in the sound. I mean, do you believe that? That it's it, it bleeds through into the music you have made. I think undoubtedly, you know, I, th I think where you grow up and your, you know, the things that have inspired you and the things that have formed you and formed the voice, I I'd certainly say that it's, you know, it'd be, be short-sighted to think that it hasn't seeped into that. I mean, we, the, the songs that we write, there's definitely a personal angle. It's definitely because of the experiences that we've had and, you know, a lot of the things we write are, feel personal, they feel meaningful. So, you know, absolutely, but... You know, I'm sure it seeped in, but at the same same time, you know, we, we've we've travelled a lot at the same time, and I wouldn't say that it was moving to London or being on the road um, changes the style of writing. I would say that probably the foundations of you as a as a writer and um, you know as a musician are probably based to some extent on where you come from, but I don't think it's so you know so heavy on you know on the way it's on influenced it that it, you stay within you know I don't notice a change from us moving between different places. This place, November sky, I'm into heart inside. This is the past right here. I choose to leave it here. Cliffs bloom to scrape you thin. The fortunes to overspill. But I can see us here without this fear.
Hello, I'm Matt from the Joy Formidable, and you're listening to Two States on RTE 2XM. You and Reese, you met at school, yeah? Yeah, we met. We didn't know each other very well at school. We were in different years, and um, we knew of each other. We were in in bands, com- probably kind of competing bands in <laughs> in school, but uh, that was uh, that was about it. It wasn't until quite a few few years later that we actually kind of met again. Mm. So, uh, how many years have you guys been playing together now? Wow. Well, we've we we were reunited probably about five years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, very, very briefly, we were in a, another band that ended very miserably. Uh, just, you know, I won't go into details, but just had a, you know, a really miserable experience. A lot of bullshit, a lot of um, illness and, and and characters and personality. Yeah, a lot of ego. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, we ultimately we moved back to to North Wales to escape all that and we weren't sure if we were even going to kind of carry on with doing music I think we were both feeling quite jaded and then we, we started writing together for the first time I think I'd just be joined as a guitarist to the previous band so we started writing together and it was very instant but it felt good it was a big um, yeah definitely you know it was uh, if it, it just felt right and I think because we'd been through this experience that had been very negative mm-hmm. there was a real sense of kind of taking back the control and doing something that was soulful and meaningful to us again and um, it was a very very instant kind of write, writing relationship that developed it you know there was it, it kind of shed all the, the negativity of, of the previous band and it was something kind of positive and ambitious and and um, and, and an instant you know click and I'd never written with anybody before I've always written I've always been a songwriter but I think you know I think straight away we realized there was something kind of quite unique about the dynamic you know and how has home recording played into that because that's kind of been a big part of the joy formidable in a way home recording yeah yeah it was a huge part of it I mean it 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 still is um particularly you know in the the early early months of us being together it was as much of a a writing tool as sitting down with a guitar or you know a couple of acoustic guitars you know I think the production definitely came into the 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 way the songs developed and and the overall sound and the signatures of of what you know the bands become so it's a huge part and it's something that we we absolutely want you know want to keep you know I think um it happens you know all too often you know it's uh you know you get suggestions for working with other producers and it's not like we want to close the door on 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 all of that i think you know when the when the time feels right it'd be great to kind of work with somebody who you really really admire and we touched upon that by having rich costi mix the record and that but in terms of from starting like that we're st- for us you know uh, keeping the control and keeping that element of production it's something that we like doing and it's a big part of the writing you know it's not it's not something that we we, we want to lose just yet at all not to press you on the other bands, but I mean, what do you think you learned from the negative experience with like sidecar kisses or uh, tricky Nixon to the other band as well? I mean, yeah, yeah. what do you think you took from that? Obviously, the negative experience and um, brought to the joy formidable, saying, okay, we know we don't want to do this, we don't want to do that. I think you know, you just, uh, I think you just to learn to. I think we were we were very patient and we were accepting of. It's always good to be, you know, accepting and patient with, with other people, and you try and give, give things a chance, and you, you, you hope that, you know, it, it'll turn itself around a situation. You, you know, you hope that it'll, it'll improve. And I think we just hung on in there, with, you know, with the, the optimism that it would get better for, for too long. And you know, I think we've learned maybe to balance that between maybe being a little bit, sometimes a bit. You know, ruthless maybe is the wrong word, but I think you know sometimes that the best way to, best way to deal with a, a situation is to just change it, you know, change and change it very bluntly. Just move on and do something, to do something different. And I think that was was very much the sentiment when we started the Joy Formidable was that we, you know, I mean, especially because in the way I joined the band and the fact that a lot of the material was written, I think I was very very ready for the songs and for the sentiment to be. You know, just to make more sense to me. You know, sometimes as a guitarist in a band that's already formed, you know, there feels like there's that distance between the material that's already written. So, um, for me, a huge part of being an artist is is about that total commitment to the tracks and you know what you're trying to say and the meaning and that 
definitely didn't feature in Psycho Kisses, you know, I was so estranged from, you know, I, and I don't know if anybody actually had anything to say in that band, and that's always something with music, you have to move, you have to put yourself, move people, you have to put yourself out there in some way, and, and that for me was definitely what I wanted to move towards with, with Joy Formidable. course of my research I stumbled across a very interesting article that was uh, <laughs> how small businesses can learn from the joy formidable have you seen that yeah, yeah. You showed me that about a, about a month ago maybe it was a few weeks yeah and I I, I kind of skimmed read it I thought it was, it was hilarious that somebody had uh, decided to to use us in a you know in a, a study a study of business of business <laughs> when, when business you know is the it's the most boring part for us you know it's like a lot of the time we get asked you know so what's it like signing to a label and what's it and and the business side has been a huge part of this bank because I, I think you're deluded if you don't if you think that you you can't be business savvy mm -hmm. and still keep the creative control and still take your band to where you want to be if, if you decide to just be totally shut down to that side of things you you, you know you, you can never entrust that to anybody you know completely you have to be aware of what's going on outside of the creative always but yeah it was uh, i did read a little bit of that yeah there was there was no real big <laughs> strategy though in that regard no. <laughs> not at all i think you have to go with what feels right the main thing that, that underpins it all is the creative and the music and having no regrets on that side and you're confident and, and everything that you put out, you're not lazy with it, you're not just putting it out because other people have told you what to do. It's always about what you feel right. I think everything falls into place, you know. I think there's definitely I, I, there's that eternal hope that if, you, if there's that much, um, you know, meaning in what you do and that much um, passion for the songs that you write, that you that you, you always hope that that will just keep everything in line, you know. But um, yeah, we've I mean we've enjoyed doing it. I think it's the the, the way that we've a, approached 
everything with the band and the fact that we've built it up very much um, together with you know we've got a, a small team that have been with us from the very start and that absolutely that's you know something we very very much celebrate because it makes every experience maybe you know it just um, emphasizes the you know every every experience because you you know that you've you've reached that because of you know by by your own volition completely that and your fan base it's a very honest mm. you know way of, of of doing things and you know it's very easy to to gauge and um yeah well it's a long journey from north wales to america but it seems like people in america have really responded to your band um what do you think you've learned from touring there? I think we've learned um, that you have to book, uh, pack a lot of books on tour. Yeah, there's a lot um, of distance in America yeah. between gigs and uh, just capitalise on all the sleep you can get, really. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, lots of books, lots of things to pass the time. I mean, we, we write a lot on the road, so I, I actually really enjoy the the touring experience in America because it gives, it gives you a lot of time to reflect and contemplate. And we have a very modest mobile recording unit and we can get ideas down. And for me, it's, you know, it's definitely a time that brings out a lot of writing, a lot of lyrics, you know. So, you know, I, I, I definitely get why touring the States breaks a lot of bands. You know, I think it, it, it stems from how m much you can hack being together. And we, we've figured our idiosyncrasies we, out we've pretty got well. It. We've, we've, got got it a, down. we've got a dynamic going on. You know? <laughs> I mean, we have our fair share of, of healthy arguments, but there's a lot of love and there's mm -hmm. a lot of respect there. And if you have that, then, you know, every, everything else, you know, just ult ultimately it's, it's very much like a... We, we tour very much like a family, you know, and... Um, and it's a, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a brilliant way of seeing the world. And every day is different. There's a lot of variation. Yeah, you meet some really good people. So. What was Letterman like? What was it like meeting him and having him pronounce your band name wrong? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, he had a very interesting pronunciation of the band, though. <laughs> yeah. Well, we do like to confuse. You know, it's like, is it formidable or yeah. formidable? Yeah. Or well, formidable? You know. It's like, <laughs> I enjoyed that. Thank you so much. Great job. The uh, joy formidable, ladies and gentlemen. The big roar. That's it. Good night, everybody. You know, those TV things are always a little bit strange. You know, there's something about, you know, being at the studio all day to play for three minutes, strictly three minutes, you know. Um, and, uh, but I don't know, we kind of, uh, I think we, we, we somehow thrive on kind of quite strange situations. I mean, yeah. I think... Uh, it pretty much sums everything up, really. It does. Yeah. You know, so we, we, we enjoyed it. It was all, all a little bit kind of surreal and it seemed to be over in, you know, in a, mm. in a, in a blink. But, um, yeah, it's, it's a nice memory to have, you know. I mean, it's such an iconic show. It's been going... But his studio, it's like he keeps it at a certain temperature and it's like a refrigerator. So you go, you, you literally come down an elevator and out, you know, like they go, right, you're on now. You go down the lift... You go out into the studio and you go, what the f And it's like walking into <laughs> you a... You can see your breath. Into a freezer instantly, like your fingers just go ah, what the... So, wow. uh, yeah. Right. So he obviously, um, obviously likes it cold.
I'm Matt from The Joy Formidable, and you're listening to Two States on RTE 2XM. You mentioned writers, and I like that you also refer to yourself like as a writer, a songwriter, um, and somebody who you made reference to in one of your songs was <laughs> Mr. Bukowski. Um, who else do you like in terms of uh, either literary figures or indeed songwriters that influence you? Oh, there's so many. Um, I mean, uh, the my main listening habits when I was growing up were Elvis Costello, Springsteen, The Smiths, John Martin, a lot, a lot of 60s, Soul, Motown. Um, so yeah, lots of things, always reading, always... I think it's, the main thing is just being curious and never putting restrictions on things, you know. I think, you know, it's... Like I said, for me, it's... It's never about genre. It's just good music, bad music, you know. Not no snobbery about pop either, because fucking, you know, there's some great melodies in, you know. I think some people turn their nose up at the word pop, but it's it's about being able to just, um, yeah, flip flip from from lots of different things, and you know, and and, and that's been the great thing about this band is that, that there's been so many art artistic offshoots from it as well with the visuals and Richard doing all our artwork and the production and that so you know it's uh, it's really great to kind of you know just keep the influences varied and just allow them to very unconsciously seep into what you're doing you know we we don't reference things direct I think that's really funny territory we you know we haven't got an agenda for what we want to sound like and we haven't got a formula for the, the way we approach writing or anything like that I think we like to keep it free and, and and swap it up and that to me is what's exciting about creating you know whatever it is yeah. you know so. the song Whirring for example like what what inspired that lyrically oh god I mean the the album as a whole is you know it was it was written over the course of a year and what was a really really um, turbulent turbulent year ultimately with a lot of highs and and equally you know a lot of really shitty moments and um, I think you know um, uh, uh, there's there's definitely that tug in, in a lot of the tracks that we write and I think whirring uh, definitely was venting a uh, you know a frustration um, of, of maybe people not listening to each other and miscommunication and something that I always call the Hancock syndrome which is where you know with you notice that a lot of comedians are, are the most depressed people right. possible yeah, yeah. do you know what I mean yeah. it's like they spend their whole days making other people feel great and yeah. laughing and mm -hmm. you know yeah. and then you know they go home and and uh, their lives and their you know their their you know their, 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 they feel very 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 different so you know it's it definitely plays with that so that's a, that's an interesting one because it's like you said Tony Hancock somebody who would yeah they could, could never really appreciate himself uh, as a performer and got very very nervous before he went on stage didn't kind of like um, performing at all and um, it even goes back further to you know uh, Pagliacci the tears of a clown it's that mm -hmm. kind of idea yeah. that comes back so there was that was something you were thinking about when you're writing the lyrics yeah never never specifically Tony Hancock, although I love him, you know, I absolutely yeah. grew up watching a, a lot of, um, of of Hancock. But yeah, just just definitely definitely that as a mm. as a symbol, you know, for people being mis misunderstood.
know, it's a bit of a chin stroker of a question, but being a three piece, what appeals to you about that setup? Three piece setup? Well, there's definitely less people to deal with. Mm. Yeah. Which is always a good thing. Yeah. I don't it's know. It's easier to contact everyone. If yeah, we were in is. like a ten piece ska band, we'd probably and never get anywhere. Names. Yeah, exactly. I'm not very good at remembering names, so at yeah. least, you know, there's only another another two people to think exactly. about. Exactly. That's uh, um, easy. I think, you know, it, it's when we met Matt, it was very immediate, you know, from, um, you know, the minute you joined, within a few days, we were out on tour. We it were, was and horrible. Been, I, knew it, I knew it was. <laughs> I haven't quite got over the trauma of that, that, first, that, that first day. But, um, you know, it just felt very instant. The chemistry, the intuition, the, you know, what turned us on about playing live, you know, what, what you know, ruffles the old hairs and gets the goosebumps going. So I think that's... I think that's quite rare, and I think the very the fact that we've been in a few bands before, and we've been, you know, we've played with other people. You you notice it straight away. You know, it's one of those things that you you realise straight away. This is you know, this is something a little bit special. Mm-hmm. And I think you know, we don't we, from that we didn't want to complicate it. it. Felt really right. You know, I definitely like um, you know the chemistry is great. I, I like the fact that there's a, there's that real rawness. You know, there's there's no covering up as a three piece. It's not like you can rely on lots of layers. And you know, you're a little bit a little bit naked, exposed, a little bit exposed. Mm. That's true. Exposed for the sham you really are. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but even musically, I mean, being a three piece, uh, and just in terms of you, you guys and what you do live, it, the songs have definitely changed since you've been playing them live. You know, mm-hmm. over over a period of time. Absolutely, and you know, I think part of that comes with just, you know, um, evolving as a band because I think when we shared the early tracks, it, we, were, we were very, very new, you know, we, we, we'd only just started and we shared the tracks very early, so I think, you know, just evolving naturally from gigging and, and touring, I think absolutely, you know, what Matt has brought to the, to the live dynamic is, is definitely something that's, you know, changed change the tracks in that in that sense and that but that's you know we 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 love that you know about um you know for us the live experience isn't about ever replicating the record you know i think it's it's always about giving them a a new kind of lease of life and as long as the two of them stand up together and they you know they've both um both got the same power then they can they can be different different animals you know and i mean during those kind of you know, wig out moments where they stretch out their songs. <laughs> wig out yeah. Wig out. It's, it's, yeah. It's good, you know. It's very therapeutic. Is there hand signals or how do you know when to kind of pull things back in as a band when you're kind of really going hell for leather? <laughs> oh man. It goes it comes from just a lot of playing together. You just almost know it's like that that the, the sort of the those just unspoken rules, you know, it can be nothing more than, you know, a, a move of the head or Blink of the eye. Telekinesis, and, Kyle. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's it. Absolutely. You mentioned earlier you have a little kind of mobile studio set up on the road. Um, not that I want to press you to make album number two, but what can you tell us uh, in terms of new material? Oh, I think we're definitely just at that stage where there's been a lot of writing on the road, um, and it's almost like we're back to the be- you know where we were at the very beginning of the band. You know, like when. When we started the Joy for Minimal Reading and I, we literally locked ourselves away and, you know, we just wrote and wrote and we had a, a huge, you know, a collection of songs and, you know, there were all sorts of styles and offshoots and, and then finally after, you know, you know, things started to make sense and I think we're definitely almost at that stage, you know, again, you know, with us having evolved as, as well and um, you're just enjoying the total freedom of writing it's all about doing not over analyzing I think you know we're very wary of not thinking about the direction or not putting time constraints or not allowing other people to put a time limit on things I think it's just you know a lot of writing you know just allowing the the way that we've changed and as people and as a band and just allowing all that to just seep into you know this new period of writing very very naturally so no it's all good we've got we've got the month of december to kind of make sense of all the all the threads and all the chaos of of what we've got we've got so far but um we're excited even you know that it's very very early days but we can definitely you know definitely sense that things are moving in a really exciting exciting way for us 
Yeah. Well, we look forward to it. Thank you very much for talking to us. All right. No worries. Um, Thank you for the questions. <laughs>
Hello, I'm Matt from the Joy Formidable, and you're listening to Two States on RTE 2XM. Well, now, let's have another pop-tastic hit after that. That's great. (laughs) Cool.